Choosing our own closing hymn, and I've chosen hymn number 550. I think it fits the theme of the day, and it fits the theme of my message. Come home. Come home. We're never at home in this world of sin. On this earth when it's redeemed, yes. But we're only at home when we're at home with God. And this is the voice of God put to music softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. God planned this homecoming day not just as a means of rejoicing on the part of the saints of God, but as an invitation to all saying, come and join. Be part of this heaven-bound throng. Forsake your sin. Accept Jesus Christ. He'll work everything out. You don't work it all out, then come to him, not any more than you cure all of your diseases before you go to the physician. God will work everything out. You simply come to him with it all and say, Lord, I want to accept Christ, and he'll take over. And you'll taste, you'll see that the Lord is good. If while we sing you want to accept Christ as Savior, then by yourself or with a friend, come down one of these aisles. The pastor will give someone to you who will counsel with you, and you'll go away rejoicing in God. Let's stand while we sing hymn number 550. Listen to God's invitation and answer it. So and tenderly Jesus is calling calling for you and for me see on the portals he's waiting and watching watching you don't object to the terminology of the song calling oh sinner so I don't like to be called a sinner but God calls us what we are I'm glad that he reveals to us what we are so that we can learn what we can be come to Christ and he'll call you saint because that means one who is saved and set apart for his glory your response, friend, is not just to my message, it is to God's invitation. God from heaven looks down, yea, I am sure he is present in this multitude of people today. What will you do with Jesus, neutral you cannot be? Someday your heart will be asking, what will he do with me? Well, you can answer that. What will you do with him? That's what he'll do with you. Accept him. He'll receive you, reject him. He wouldn't have any choice. Who'd want a Christ rejecter in heaven? Haven't you had enough of sin? Hasn't it done enough of its damage? Do you want to continue longer in such danger and misery? Come to Christ, the Son of God, who was manifested to undo the works of the devil, and he'll take your life and untangle it and make it what it ought to be for his glory. Come while we sing the second stanza. Why should we tarry when Jesus
folks up there in the balcony, are you all saved? If the Lord should come today, would you go up? Happy in Him? You folks right down front here, are you all saved? God invites you. Wherever you may be, you folks in the back, quite often that's where folks come so they can ease in and ease out, not be embarrassed. We don't want to embarrass you. We want to help you. If you'll accept Jesus Christ, your helper he will be. But you must open the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, Jesus said. If any man will hear my voice, and you've heard it, and will open the door, I will come in. But he won't batter the door down. Will you let him in? Will you invite him in to be your savior? If you will, then it's worth doing publicly. Even in a big room like this, in a long aisle like this, if you want to accept Christ, just say, pardon me, and make your way, come on down front. We'll have someone counsel with you. While we sing the last stanza, God is calling to you, and it's your soul. It will go up or down. You'll not live forever. You have no assurance even to the end of the day. You owe it to him who loved you so. He's so good. While we sing the last stanza, will you come? Oh, for the wonder. someone has said, boy, I was as close as I'll ever get this morning. Not as close as if you accept him. There's still time at the end of the service when they scatter four different ways for you to make your way here to the front and talk to Dr. Tassel, Dr. Scholes, your pastor, myself, David Board, David Morris, and any of us. We'd so love to help you. We were once in your place fighting God loving sin we tasted God is so good come to him pastor father just now I pray that you will seal this message to the hearts of all who have heard a great multitude has listened out in radio land and I pray that days to come we might rejoice with thee at the result of this hour now father as we are dismissed for our time of fellowship around the tables i pray that you will bless each participant bless the food that has been provided those who have worked so hard to make it possible god make this to be a very precious time that will lead us into the afternoon with hearts filled with anticipation that which you're yet to do to accomplish this day for Christ's sake. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask that you just be seated. Now, we're going to have to have a lot of cooperation, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to dismiss two groups of people first, and as they are making their way out of the auditorium, then we're going to uh, do some explaining concerning uh, the thing that's going to happen in the midst of the rest of us. All of you who have children to be picked up, will you listen very closely right now? Uh, in just a moment, I'm going to dismiss you. I want you to go out that center door back into the elementary building where you will pick up your children. 
But then you take your children and go up the back stairs of the elementary building. We want you to come into the back of the fellowship hall. And you'll be going directly up the back stairs and uh, you will join the uh, lines, uh, serving lines up there. There will be folk to give you direction. And so uh, if uh, right now uh, you will make your way out, just stand wherever you are. stand as we sing the last verse and remain standing for prayer. The last verse. Great things he had taught us, great things he had done, and great our rejoicing to be the God's God. We're so glad that you're back this afternoon. We're glad that God has brought Pastor El Gina, his wife, in safely. And they got here time in time to eat, but they said they joined us via radio this morning. They listened to the service as they drove. So I've asked Pastor El Gina to come and lead us in our opening prayer this afternoon. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we give you thanks again today for the wonderful privilege which is ours of knowing Christ, preaching him to others. Thank you for every remembrance of this ministry and your continued blessing upon it down through these many, many years. Thank you for the founders of the church and thank you for those who've come along down through the years. We pray thy special blessing upon Brother Veltman this afternoon as he gives some testimonies of your blessing in his own life. Thank you for Pearl, and thank you for A.D. and what they've meant to us. 
Thank you for Harold, Harold Scholes and his ministry. We do pray thy blessing upon him as he opens the word. We pray that our hearts shall be open to the open book today. We pray that we shall not leave this auditorium just exactly the same as we came. Bless all of them. Bless Pastor Will Height. And we pray that this day might be a rejoice, bring rejoicing to his own heart and blessings to his ministry in the days which lie ahead. Lord, we're here because we believe you're going to be here to bless. Speak to hearts. We pray that should there be any here this afternoon who have never come to that place where they've learned to trust in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness, may this be the day when they shall turn from darkness to light and trust the Savior. Bless in every phase of the ministry. Use us all for your glory. For Jesus' sake, amen. amen.
Amen. Some who have gone away from home haven't really moved that far away, and we still have good fellowship. This afternoon, we're so glad that uh, Pastor David Cortner and his wife are with us, will be with us throughout the remainder of the day. And uh, he and his wife are going to come and, and uh, praise God in song, and then Mrs. Virginia Walton is going to follow through as she ministers to our hearts. God bless you, folk, as you do that. And while they're waiting to get past the choir and they're coming down, just um, let me say that this evening uh, we need to be here on time. We need to be ready to start on time because we're doing something a little bit special. Uh, at 545, I want all of the pastors here. Uh, we have been asked by Brother Merle, Merle Hall to furnish uh, him with a colored picture of the uh, pastors who have preceded me here uh, along with myself. Uh, he wants to use that for the October cover of the Baptist Bulletin. We need to get that picture at 545, so be here. Make sure you shave before you come. <laughs> know that you're going to get your picture taken. And then uh, that's going to be colored. Uh, and Doc, uh, he, he was fretting because Tassel was fretting because see, he was afraid he wasn't going to have time to shave. But uh, uh, that's 545. Then at 6 o'clock sharp, our photographer is going to be set up over here on this corner of our platform to take a, uh, uh, one of these coordinated pictures uh, where the camera takes uh, all these shots as it swings, you know, and then they put them all together so that we'll get everything from this corner the uh, building right around through the choir, uh, all on that picture. Now tonight, uh, Brother Board, I want, to, if we've got people in the video or what have you, I want them in the aisles for that time. We can pull those chairs out later, let them carry a chair with them or whatever. We want everyone in, inside here, at least until the picture's taken. Up in the balcony, we're going to have to figure that out. Back row, you can stand. Uh, Some way you're going to have to uh, get in sight or down in the aisles or something, but we're going to work that out. But we, we're going to need cooperation. We're going to want to get that picture 6 o'clock sharp uh, so that uh, it will be over with and we're right into our program for the evening. So thank you for your cooperation. It's going to be a great time. Sorry to keep you waiting.
God did a wonderful thing. I wish we had time to just stop and find out where it all began in your life. When God uh, really reached down and began to speak to you, when he saved you, when he brought you to be a part of this great family. We don't have that time. My own memories go back to the days of A.D. Moore because A.D. was the pastor here when I joined the church right after World War II. He was the pastor under whom uh, Mrs. Wilhite was saved. And uh, uh, he was the one who married uh, me uh, to the beautiful Grandview girl that uh, uh, he allowed me to court. But uh, A.D. Moore has meant much through the years to my own life, to my own ministry. Uh, we were the last ones married by A.D. after he retired the first time. <laughs> I don't know how many times he retired, but you remember the time he retired the first time. Took the trailer and didn't get very far and rolled it over and <laughs> came back again. But uh, uh, through the years after that, as we would come back from the Philippines, A.D., uh, spent many a time in our home, we and his, uh, just counseling together and rejoicing together in the goodness of God. A.D. Moore will never be forgotten by many here in this place. Back in the days when I came to this church, there was a young lady by the name of Pearl Jurd uh, working uh, in the church faithfully. She later became Mrs. Moore. We're so glad to have her here to uh, speak in behalf of that era of ministry. But before we have her come, I, I just want to see how many of you are still around who uh, were saved or baptized or you came into Grandview Park Baptist Church under A.D.'s ministry. Let's have you stand. I want to see you. Amen. Amen. Oh, we still have a Amen. tremendous influence Amen. abiding here from A.D.'s ministry. Amen. Thank you. And now before... Uh, Pearl comes, I've asked George Wayne and his wife. George has been a tremendous blessing to this preacher's heart. Probably one of the greatest lay teachers I've ever known. Uh, I've learned a lot from sitting at the feet of this man of God. He came into this church under A.D.'s ministry. I've asked him to bring his wife and speak just a few words in regards to A.D.'s ministry, that period of time. Come on, folks. And then following them will be um, my sweetheart and yours, Pearl Moore. <laughs> well, I've been had the privilege of <clears throat> sitting under the all ministers we've had today. And I'm thankful for Grandview Park Baptist Church. And my wife is. We, we were terribly backslidden when we came in this church. I had a good mother and a good father who prayed constantly for me, I know. And all you, many of you folks here, the older people, I know you prayed too. So God finally got a hold of our hearts. We were really backslidden. But I want to say something, all that time, I always knew I belonged to the Lord. We were saved under the ministry of Reverend Case down at Galilee Baptist Church. And we took part in the church, and we were married by Dr. Case. But he was a real, he was a great pastor. At that time, he was, he was one of the best in the city. He held citywide meetings and Bible classes. He was good, very good. But he never impressed us upon separation. He never impressed upon our congregation, separation. And I'm not blaming anyone, only myself, for backsliding and getting away from the Lord. Nobody's fault but mine and my wife's. She's as bad as I was. <laughs> but my folks, my mom and dad, they were always after us to come up to Grandview, come to Grandview Church. 
And uh, of course, at that time, why those are the times. Don't think too much of this. I've been here for, for we've been here for 42 years, so don't just forget about it. The past, we'd hide the beer, beer cans, get the smoking trays all out of the way, get every not beer cans, beer bottles, and get everything all the way, clear the smoke cleared out of the house, and we thought we was fooling somebody. But I tell you, you don't fool anybody. Yeah. We've quit smoking for years, years ago, probably 40 years ago or better. And even to be around it, you can smell it. So we wasn't fooling anybody. But you know, I always, I always, even in a backslidden condition, I might say that I still love the Lord in my heart, even though I was out in the wrong crowd, living for the devil, up to the hill, and we got started out to Grandview, like I say, our, my parents is praying and other folks is praying for us. I've only had four minutes, I'd better hurry up. And so, so uh, we got under the ministry of A.D. Moore. Now, A.D. and I had some, something in common except the Lord. He, he loved automobiles. And I'd, I've met him down at the folks' house, and we, we had a good time other than talking about things to the Lord, but of course he always brought those in, so I never forgot about that. Well, anyway, we, we became, we started coming out to Grandview. We, we said we'd come once a day. We got started in a modernistic place, and I knew right off the bat that wasn't the place, because the first thing they did was get off the Sunday school lesson and talking about other things. I knew that wasn't right. We didn't stay there very long. So we decided we'd, we'd try Grandview. We, we heard they was pretty, pretty straight out there, but we came out. And I tell you, when A.D. When he started preaching, he began hitting us, and hitting us hard. And I'll never, never forget him. He's a great preacher, he's a great man of God. And we had a, Sunday school teacher, we started coming to Sunday school too. He was layman. Name was he was John Peterson's uh, John's father, Pete Pete Peterson, and he was in our Sunday school class. And I tell you, he laid it on. So we had a, a double dose. <laughs> Every Sunday we had a double dose. And so I I got straightened out first, and I decided by God's grace I was going to change. And then Pauline. She followed me a little bit, but I wanted to go forward. Why? She wasn't quite ready. But I said, when you get ready, just kind of pull on my trouser leg. One Sunday she did it. <laughs> and we went forward. And I tell you, it was wonderful. I'll never, I'll never forget it. And from that time on, I decided that I was not going to be ashamed of Jesus Christ. I want, I want to say something. If you're ashamed of Jesus, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you if you're ashamed of Jesus Christ. And I said I would never be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't mean by that every time I should have spoke, I spoke, because I haven't. But he, he was in my heart, and I couldn't keep my mouth shut. I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Pauline was at home with Kurt, but I was on the job, and I'd been a corker. I, they all knew me. And... Right off the bat, you know, they they start making fun, and I was by myself at that time, and they they, they would really hurt me. But you know, uh, they start telling me stories. Start out, start out telling me stories, and uh, I would got to the place I said, "Now listen, if you're going to tell a filthy story, I don't want to hear it." And so finally, that news got around, and that stopped. That stopped, and then. The Lord blessed over there. I, I've, I've, I've been over the shop there at the time where, where I'd, I'd, I'd go in the, the restroom and cry. It'd been, it was that rough. I'd, I always liked people. I didn't want to be made fun of. But I tell you what, when I'd go in there, they might, the whole group might even start making fun of me. You know what I'd do? I'd whip out my testament and I'd sit down on the floor. We didn't have enough chairs to go around sit on the floor and I couldn't read it. I was too confused to read, but I'd just stay, stay, sit there with it open, just sit there with it open. Pretty soon I'd be all in there by myself. That shows the power of God. That shows the power of God. 
And I tell you, he turned me wrong side out, my wife. And I, I can't praise him enough. And he used it, Dr. Moore, A.D. Moore, he wasn't a doctor. A.D. Moore, he used him to really help me. And I loved the man, the Lord. Yeah. And that, from that time on, I, I, I thought, by the grace of God, I'm not going to be ashamed. And I tell you what, you might think you're weak out there. But if you're not ashamed of Christ, he'll give you strength. And I tell you, it'll be worth it. You'll feel so good. You'll feel so good about sticking up for the Lord. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. And Grandview has meant a lot to me. And, and I have many, many dear friends here. And the Lord's been good to me through the years. Been good to us through the years. Real good to us. And I tell you, uh, he's let me come to a... I'm older probably than anyone on the platform. And, and, he, and he's real. It's that, it's that, I'm not any new Christian. It's worked for at least... Uh, 60 years, at least 60 years, maybe 62. And I'm thankful to be able to stand up here today and tell you that I love Jesus Christ. And he's a wonderful Savior. Amen. And if you don't know him, don't go, about, go on without him. Because there's only one end. We don't like to talk about it. There's only two places. One's in heaven and one's in hell. And I want to leave that word with you. And it pays to serve Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, George. Amen. Sparrow Collins, I want to say what some of you have heard before, but back in 53, George took me under his wing, taught me a lot of things. I went all around the world for years and years talking about that old deacon at Grandview who taught me so much. A year or so ago, I was standing here, we were celebrating his birthday, and I, I sat here on the platform and I was kind of counting backwards because they let us know how old he was. All of a sudden, I realized that old deacon I talked about uh, was all of 49 years old when he had me under his wing. <laughs> I was already 55 then, and I went home and I said to my wife, honey, you think these young preachers working with me go around talking about that old pastor they work with? <laughs> she said, honey, you know they do. <laughs> I said, honey, they hadn't better let me catch them. Go on, Pearl. God bless you. So good to have you here. Amen. We love you. I'm glad I can say with our brother George that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God into salvation unto everyone that believeth. I'm glad I can be here today and represent my dear husband, who's now at home with the Lord. You know, I'm going to do something maybe a little out of order, Brother Will Hype. Go ahead, we'll but fire some, you then. Uh, <laughs> some friends from Florida called me and wanted me to relay their greetings on this day. And that is uh, Dick and uh, Ethelene Dawson. And they, uh, they said they wanted to uh, send their greetings to the people of the Grandview Park Baptist Church on this special day. And they were so grateful for the faithful ministry of Pastor A.D. Moore and for it was under their ministry that he, they were both born again, they and their children and their parents. And um, they said that, and um, they were thankful for all the ministry uh, of the others, Pastor Beltman and the other pastors that followed in their ministry here at Grandview. And it was signed Dick and Ethelene Dawson at Lake Alford, uh, Florida. So I just had to bring that to you this morning, this afternoon, because I know you'd want to hear that. Well, I'm happy to be here today at this uh, homecoming event. Homecomings are great, aren't they? The only thing about them, when you go back in that room and see all those old pictures, <laughs> it makes you feel awful old. And I feel real old today because I met so many, so very many of the people that are now older that used to be in the junior department. <laughs> and uh, they have families now, some of them have grandchildren. Here I am. So that makes me feel real old. But, uh, you know, and the Lord has been good, has me down through the years at Grandview. As we think of this homecoming, surely it's been great. All the messages this morning have been special this morning. And then that great dinner that we had, which was lovely, too, that was planned for us. It was just lovely. Then we think, too, don't we, of another homecoming. Sometimes we have as families, we have our homecomings. And they're great times, too, aren't they, when we talk about old things, we reminisce and talk about the things of the past. And truly, it's great, isn't it? But there is another homecoming coming that's going to be the greatest of all. And that's when our Lord's going to come for us in the clouds. He's coming one of these days. 
He's going to receive us unto himself. You know, I was thinking, there has been a lot of planning go into this uh, homecoming today. Oh, my, the planning and the praying and the working and everything that's gone into it. It hasn't been easy, I'm sure. A lot of work has gone into it. And it's soon going to be over. Just a little while this evening, and then it's going to be gone. We'll have memories of it, of course, but it's going to be past. But you know, this homecoming, that the Lord, he's preparing something for us, too, isn't he? He's preparing a mansion for us. And we're going to be with him someday. He's, he's planning and working to take us to himself. And then we're going to be forever with him. It won't be for a day, but it'll be forever that we'll be with the Lord. So shall we ever be with the Lord. That'll be great, won't it? Amen. To be with him at that homecoming day when he comes for us. Well, great things have been accomplished here at Grandview in the past. I'm sure as you all know, many of you have been saved and under good preaching good music, good teaching, good fellowship. It's really been great. You've seen a lot of things happen here. Grandview's meant a lot to me. I've been around here for quite a while, many, many years, in and out, as it were, maybe some 25, 30 years, been in and out Grandview. And it's been real special to me. I learned a lot of things here at Grandview that I never knew before. I went to a, a, liber a church that was real liberal, and I didn't know too much about the things of the Lord. But I learned a lot of things here at Grandview about the Lord and uh, many wonderful truths that I learned from him. And, you know, I never, never uh, had any fear when I would ask a stranger or an unsaved person to come to this church because I knew they'd hear the gospel. They'd always go away having heard that the Lord Jesus loved them, that he died for them. Never need to be afraid to ask anyone to come here. They always got the gospel. It's so wonderful today here to have all these uh, pastors here today. Every one of them has a real special place in my heart. Every one of you got, I could tell a lot of things and really mean it, but I don't have time and Amen. tell a lot of things I'd like to tell about each one of you, how you've really been a blessing to my own heart down through the years. And uh, I remember back though in uh, 1948 when A.D. resigned this church and went to California. And uh, I thought that was terrible. I thought, boy, that church it's really going to go down. Maybe some of you felt that way, too. The church was going to probably just fall to pieces, you know. But, you know, it didn't. It didn't fall to pieces at all. Because it wasn't built on a man. It was built on the Word of God. Amen. And it still is. And um, we know that the Bible says in uh, Matthew 24, 25, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And, you know, um, if you think about this, and when Pastor Veltman came, the work kept right on growing just like it had before. And as well, when the other pastors came that followed him, the work kept right on growing the same as it had before because it's, it's built on the Word of God. And the Bible says that thy word shall not return void, but it shall accomplish that which it pleases and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto it was sent. So we know God has promised to bless and to honor his word. We could go on and on of things that's happened in the past. A lot of things that happened that we don't have time to talk about that's happened in years past. I remember one Sunday we had, uh, maybe some of you will remember this, that uh, we had a Sunday school contest with a church in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota under Dr. Merck. And uh, I don't know, I think that was in the 40s that we had that contest. And we had 1,008 people that packed that church that Sunday morning. 1,008 people in the Sunday school. So that was a high mark for a grand view at that time. And that was such a blessing to have that many in our church. It was really packed out. Well, I would, I'd like to say what the Apostle Paul said over in the book of Philippians 3, 13 and 14. There's a lot of wonderful things happened in the past. But, you know, we can't rest on past victories, can we? And uh, uh, the Apostle Paul tells us that. He says in the book of Philippians 3, uh, 13 and 14, forgetting those things that, which are uh, behind and looking forth to those things which are before, pushing ahead. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. We're not to look back and keep thinking about what has gone on in the past, but to keep forging ahead for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's much to be done for him in these days. I wouldn't want to close without paying a special tribute to my dear husband. As I stand here today, 
He had 60 years, over 60 years of ministry for the Lord, faithful years of ministry. And during his retirement years, he built three new churches for the glory of God. God blessed him in a very special way in his ministry for him. We had many happy years together, and um, God blessed uh, our time together. But we did have a lot of trials and tribulations, too, together, as some of you know. We had a lot of things happen to us. But through it all, the Lord Jesus met our need, and his grace was sufficient for you know, all the needs that we had. I read a story the other day, and I want to give this story in closing. You won't mind me, you pastor schools. He's a storyteller. He likes to tell stories. <laughs> He's funny preacher. Be my guest. <laughs> there, was a, there was a builder on top of a high building. And he need, needed to get word to the, uh, to the ground, down on the ground, to send up some more material. And so he thought, well, uh, he couldn't make them hear him. He yelled and yelled, no one could hear. So he thought, I'll drop a coin. So he dropped a coin down. A pedestrian come along, picked up the coin, and went on his way. He dropped another coin. Same thing happened. Somebody picked it up and went on. He thought, well, I'll drop something else. So he found a little, uh, a little stone, and he dropped that stone. And he knew that if that hit somebody, they'd really look up. So he dropped that stone and hit a man right on the shoulder. And he looked up to see what was going on. So that way he got the message to the earth that he wanted, down on the ground, that he wanted to get down here. And you know, as I was thinking about that, I was thinking, God dropped a lot of stones on our pathway. So many stones he dropped. We had strokes and heart attacks and fires and tornadoes. Many other things happened to us. And then we had that serious accident that they knew that I wasn't going to live. They, the doctor said that I would never make it. Couldn't possibly live. And um, I don't know whether Pearl Lemon's here today or not. I saw her at the noon hour. But she said that uh, she went up and down the lake shore where we had our little cabin and asked all the people, they were going to ask all the people for money for flowers for my funeral. <laughs> so I said, the Lord is good. He raised me up from all, those, from all those broken bones and all those problems that I had. Truly, the Lord was good. Brother Harold used to call on me so often, encourage my heart when I was in the hospital there for so long on my back. But God has to do that sometimes. He has to drop a few stones to, on our pathway to get us to look up to him. We don't always know why he drops his stones, do we? He wants us to stop and look up to him. And I'm sure that through all the, all the times that we were laid aside, that we were drawn much, much closer to the Lord. That we got to know more of his love, more of his grace, more of his power. And uh, we were able to witness more to the Lord. And uh, I just can't do anything but thank the Lord for his goodness to me and raising me up and getting me on my feet so that I could even be here today. Truly, the Lord is good, isn't he? Dr. Uh, Dr. Nettleton said in his message this morning, God is good. Surely he was good to me, and, and I, really, I really can't praise him enough for all he's done for me. How can I do less than give him my best and live for him completely after all he's done for me? I would like to close with a little benediction that Brother Archie, always used to give us many times when he would be uh, <coughs> closing the service he gave us this little benediction in hebrews 13 20 and 21 now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight to him be glory forever and ever amen, amen. We're going to take a few minutes to sing together some choruses. We're going to learn a couple now. We're going to review them again tonight. And this is just a little informal time that I hope uh, will be a blessing to you. Let's begin with the one we started with in Sunday school and learned. I'll praise your name, Lord and sing your song. It's in your uh, bulletin if you need the words. I'll praise your name.
in your bulletin, there is a chorus sheet with a couple of songs we're going to learn right now. One of them is, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Most of you know it. If you need the words, it's Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Anybody? Just do that. It's beautiful. Okay, here we go. for the children and in that chorus sheet you will see some words that we're going to use with a Disney tune. That's the California influence coming out of me. <laughs> Most of you know it's a small, small world. You know how the tune goes? And uh, we're going to sing it with the words that you've got in your uh, sheet there. Okay, what's the first word? When? Okay, here we go. When our Lord was here We're going to do that again tonight. Do you like that? Yeah. Beverly loves it. It's just her kind of stuff. Pastor?